and thanks very much for being there. Afternoon. Let me ask you about uh, these terror raids as well as some of the talk around it. You may or may not have heard Michael Keenan, the Justice Minister, he spoke a little bit earlier this morning uh, to David Spears here on Sky News. Uh, the government putting a lot of focus on their concerns around this. From a Greens perspective, how do you see uh, this issue uh, in the wider context, I suppose, of relations with the Muslim community as well as community fears and concerns around possible terrorist activity? Well, it is concerning. I mean, no one wants to feel that their community isn't safe, but ultimately this comes down to cohesion and making sure that everyone uh, in Australia, in Melbourne, where I'm from, feels like they've got a place. In my electorate of Melbourne that I represent has got more public housing than anywhere else in the country, and in the public housing block near me, there's about 50% of the population identifies as Muslim, and I spend a lot of time there. And one of the biggest issues that uh, they say to me is, uh, is around unemployment and engagement and people uh, are looking for jobs and applying for jobs and aren't getting them and uh, we've been promised over the years several government programs to assist in addressing that and make people feel uh, more engaged with the community and the government routinely cuts funding to those areas so um, if the government is serious about tackling it, and I believe that they are then it's time perhaps uh, with the new leadership that we've got and a willingness to have a more uh, deeper conversation about um, the, the causes of some of these is to get to the root cause and to look at some of those issues of engagement, to look at why uh, kids at school or young kids at university are looking at their parents perhaps and saying, well, I, I look at you and you've got a master's degree and you're driving a taxi um, or I've just finished my finance degree at RMIT and I'm trying to find a job and no one's even giving me a job interview. They're some of the real issues that, um, I, that I believe are playing a role in making uh, a lot of people in Australia feel like Australia doesn't have a place for them. It's certainly a complicated issue. Another complicated issue, which was my primary reason for getting you, Adam Bant, on the program today, the High Court uh, is hearing this challenge in relation to the status of the detention centre in Nauru. Um, what is your expectation in that case? Well, it's an important matter they're considering. They're, they're considering whether Australia, uh, has, the Australian government, has the power constitutionally to just uh, take people and deport them to other countries, to transfer them and to detain them in other countries. And, uh, the, of course, the, um, the people who've been subject to that are arguing that the Australian government doesn't. And uh, this is something that we, as the Greens, have been concerned about for some time. Uh, uh, obviously, not just the legality is an issue of concern for us, but the morality of what Australia is doing uh, and so we're watching very closely what will come out of the High Court decision uh, today or the, the hearing today and ultimately decision sometime. One of the interesting things about what uh, the new status in Nauru is about asylum seekers being able to move freely I assume that the Greens albeit as a lesser of evils I'm sure you would argue that that is a better case scenario than them being locked up I'm interested in the political strategy though as well from the government surely there'd be concerns there that all of a sudden uh, asylum seekers are accessible in a way that they haven't been previously to journalists for example uh, to be able to sort of get to the bottom of, of some of the concerns within these camps well, it's now been turned from a uh, island prison to a prison island and there are still enormous restrictions placed on uh, mm. the people who are stuck there and uh, there is a real question about what access there will be for journalists and independent investigators to go and have a look at the, the centre and who might remain in the, descent, in the centre. For example, what happens with all of the people whose claims uh, aren't successful? Are they going to be taken back to the centre or are they going to be taken to Australia? Um, but what we do know and we're hearing report after report, despite the evidence, uh, despite the efforts from the Australian and Nauruan governments to uh, to stop access and to stop um, sunlight getting into what's going on there, uh, is we hear reports that suggest that life on Nauru for uh, refugees is not a safe life. Um, we've had. Uh, the re repeated reports now of uh, rape, uh, we've had reports of people being uh, had stones thrown at them, a report of one person being blinded. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a safe place for refugees. And then there's the broader question of um, if these people are being released into the Nauruan community, what does life on Nauru for uh, a refugee look like? What does it look like economically? Uh, does this, uh, uh, this is an island that has been reliant on aid money to survive. Um, how do you start a life? How do you find a job? How do you start a business? Well, can I, can how do you jump find in there? Uh, schools for your kids? Can I jump in there and just ask a question? What, 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 is, what are the Greens looking for here? Because 
One of the issues, of course, is that Nauru has now signed the relevant UN conventions. Uh, Papua New Guinea has as well, but we know that Port Moresby is incredibly dangerous. I hear what you say about the threats uh, to asylum seekers on Nauru as well. Is it a case that, uh, that the Greens want uh, safe passage to more developed countries uh, for these asylum seekers? Well, we've long argued for an end to offshore processing and for greater intake in Australia. And Australia could be doing a lot more and should not be um, leaning on neighbouring countries to uh, sign conventions and uh, with the promise of giving them uh, money for doing so uh, on the basis that we're asking uh, less developed countries in our region that have more problems than we have in Australia when it comes to economic and social wellbeing, uh, asking them to uh, bear an unfair burden. Now, more broadly, what is the approach for stopping people getting uh, on boats and risking their lives and how do we uh, ensure that people find safer pathways when they're fleeing persecution? Yes, that does have to involve Australia uh, working with other developed countries to say, uh, let's increase our intake in the region. But look, Australia, as the richest country in the region, has a special obligation and it's not meeting it. All right, Adam Bant, we appreciate you joining us and we also appreciate your patience uh, with the busy 45 minutes that we've had here on Sky News. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Adam.